Lindsay Del Carlo, the trial garden manager for Renee's Garden Seeds. Today I'm preparing all my pots for container vegetables and I'd like to show you what I do so that you can also be successful with growing vegetables in containers. When you're choosing your containers, make sure you find containers with holes in them. And if there's no holes, make sure that you drill holes. Drainage is really important with any container plants because as you water, if you have sitting water, then you'll just get root rot and that'll kill off your plants right away. Vegetables need at least a 15 inch wide by 15 inch tall pot. That's the minimum size pot that you would want for container vegetables. They need enough space so they can spread their roots out and you won't end up having to water every single day. Then next thing I get a fresh bag of brand new potting soil, good quality potting soil, and potting soil comes with amendment in it already and this lasts for some time but when I plant vegetables especially fruiting type vegetables like tomatoes or peppers or cucumbers or squash these are really heavy feeders. I have a bag of dry vegetable fertilizer and I read my instructions on the back and this says it wants a quarter cup per five gallons of potting mix. So this is about five gallons of potting mix. So I'll measure out my quarter cup. And I'll add it to the potting soil. I don't fill it completely full yet because I want to mix it in. I'm just going to take my trowel and mix it into the potting soil. As the plants grow, the fertilizer will break down and when you water, the roots grow through the soil and they can take up this fertilizer. It's good to have extra fertilizer to feed these hungry plants. I got my fertilizer all mixed in and then I'll top it off. Top off the pot with more soil. You want to get it nice and full. All these vegetables will grow in these pots for several months, so you want the pot to be pretty full because it will all settle over time and you don't want to have too little soil. So I just make a well in the middle. And this is a tomato here I'm planting. Get that in there and then firm the soil around the plant. Don't push down too hard because you will push out all the air space and then your soil will be way too compact. So I just give it, you know, just firm it nicely around the plant. Tap the pot down and that's pretty good. These are all vegetables that I had started early from seed with the idea that I would transplant them into their pots. But this planting method applies for all container vegetables, whether you're transplanting early grown seedlings or whether you're sowing directly in the pot like you would do for squash or cucumbers. Then the next thing I do is I add a mulch over the top. And the mulch I have readily available mostly is wood chips, some fine wood chips. And you can use any, anything dry. You could use straw or you could use dry grass clippings. It's kind of whatever's available to you. You can use dry leaves. But the idea of a mulch is it creates a layer over the top of your potting soil so that it's not exposed and drying out too much. And I just add about a half inch layer thick over the top. And wood chips, these are meant to just sit on top of the soil. You don't ever want to mix wood chips into your soil because the wood chips tend to bind up the nitrogen in the soil and so you're, it's not going to be available to your plants. So next I'm going to water in my pot um, really gently but thoroughly. You want to get it completely soaked so that all the soil settles down and then your roots can start growing into the soil. About watering your vegetables, the amount you're going to have to water 
all depends. It depends on the area you put them in. If they're in full sun all day long, they are going to need more water than if they are in afternoon shade. So it just depends on your weather and it depends on the size of pot. If you have a really big pot, it's not going to need as much water as a smaller pot. But the most important thing is to just never let them get too dry. So we have our brand new potting soil, which comes with amendment in it. And we have also added a dry vegetable fertilizer, which will feed the plant throughout its growing season. And then about a month after my vegetables have been in their pots growing on, I still supplement more with a liquid vegetable fertilizer. And I do this about every two weeks. Again, these vegetables are very heavy feeders. And for vegetables in containers, they don't have the luxury like vegetables in the ground where they can send their roots as deep as they want, searching for nutrients. They have a certain amount of space to fill up. So you need to keep adding nutrients. And with vegetables in containers, they require more water. Like tomatoes in the ground that like to dry out a little bit, vegetables in containers should never be allowed to get very dry. And with all that extra water, you're leaching out nutrients with every watering. About a month after I've planted, when they're fully grown in their pots, I start with an additional um, liquid vegetable fertilizer. And this is about two tablespoons of fertilizer per gallon, and I will just drench all my plants. This liquid fertilizer I have here is just an all-purpose fertilizer. I stick with the all-purpose to give it you know, a full spectrum of nutrients that it needs. It's got the nitrogen that it needs. It's got the potassium and phosphorus that it needs kind of in an even blend. Here you so can see I have some more mature tomatoes in containers and they have been getting all the correct care that they need. You can see that they're fruiting, they're nice and dark green, they still have flowers coming on, they're in nice big pots with mulch, and I have all of mine set up on a drip irrigation system on a timer. So if you want to get fancy, this is a really great way to keep your watering consistent. You can check out reneesgarden.com and see all the varieties of wonderful container vegetables we have. All these plants that we have designated for containers are plants that stay compact but get good quantities of fruit so they're great for growing into containers. We have several different kinds of tomatoes, peppers, squash, cucumbers, lettuce. There's quite a variety of plants that you can grow in containers. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.